I was never the kind of guy with grand ambitions. I grew up in the spindle, five sectors high on Neo Terra. Sure, I wanted out of the muck, the never-ending labyrinth of rusting catwalks and greasy food stalls. But the stars? They were for the chrome-plated corporate suits floating in their high-rises. That all changed when the scavenger crew brought the pod back. I was 16, a lanky kid with better brains than brawn. Our boss, old Grig, he'd pay a pittance for any half-decent piece of old tech we hauled out of the exclusion zone. This pod, though. It glowed with blue light, veins spreading under its translucent shell like a network of neon signs. Inside, a figure hunched, not human, but vaguely so, skin like liquid mercury mirroring the light. A Xenos! Grig wheezed, his one good eye wide with greed. We'll sell this to the cartel. They'll pay out the nose. Thing is, the Xenos wasn't dead, not even close. The moment Grig pried the pod open, a tentacle shot out. Didn't go for Grig's throat, latched straight onto me. Pain like liquid fire tore through my veins, and then... Silence. The Xeno slumped, and a strange calm washed over me. I looked down at my arm, no longer scrawny but rippling with newfound muscle. The crew's thugs began looking at me sideways, suspicion glinting in their eyes. I didn't wait around to find out their plans. Slipped out through the air vents and vanished into the spindle. Now, years later... I drift between the undercities of Neo Terra, the creature inside me. It's no saint. It whispers, promises power to reshape the world, to burn away the corruption that eats at humanity's bones. It wants me to be its weapon. Every day I feel my humanity slipping away. I can shatter walls with a blow, run faster than the hover trains, sense danger before it arrives. But the price is steep. The changes aren't just muscle and bone. This symbiotic bond goes deeper. There's a hunger in me now, a need that churns my guts even when they're full. Easy there, boy, the bartender says, pushing the shot glass away. His eyes dart towards the distorted bulge under my coat, where the thing stirs and thrums restlessly. You've had more than enough. Don't call me boy, I snarl. My voice comes out lower than I remember, infused with an unfamiliar, metallic coldness. He raises his hands, backing off quickly. Sometimes, I wonder if there's a way out of this, a way to sever the link without killing us both. But the creature knows my thoughts, and its laughter shivers through my very marrow. It grows stronger, and I grow weaker. I stumble out of the dive bar, into the relentless drizzle of the Undercity. The neon sludge of advertisements paints the cracked ferrocrete in sickly colours. The stench of rot and machine oil burns my nose mixed with the sharper scent of fear. My own sweat, a nervous sweat. The hunger burns like a fire in my stomach. It's worse since the bar. The burn of cheap liquor did little to dull its insistent bite. But in my haze, a new target had crystallised. The fat corpsuit with his glittering data pad and the armed escort that trailed him a few paces back. It wouldn't be a clean hit, not in the crowded market, but the urge was too great to resist. Hey you! My voice scrapes out, a rusty growl with a tremor I try to hide. The corpsuit turns, his eyes widening in the dim glow as he takes me in. The unnatural swell of my shoulders, the twitch of my fingers, they're starting to resemble claws more than hands. Problem? His voice squeaks. Thin, reedy, just like a fattened rodent. A feral grin splits my face and I lunge. The guards are quicker than they look, mag pistols barking in the close confines. Pain lances through me, but there's a strange exhilaration to it. A mingling of white-hot agony and surging power. The symbiont sings within me, strengthening my limbs, toughening my skin. Bullets deflect with dull thuds. In seconds, it's over. The guards lie in twisted heaps, their uniforms spattered with crimson. The corpsuit is cowering, his data pad long abandoned, piss staining his expensive slacks. P please, he whimpers. I tilt my head, considering. 
The hunger is a raging wildfire now, threatening to burn away all reason. My fingers elongate, the nails hardening into blades. In the dimness, they reflect the corpse suit's terrified eyes. Then, a voice cuts through the haze. Hold it right there, freak show! I turn. A figure detaches from the shadows, tall and lean. His face is half obscured, but the long coat and the pulse rifle slung over his shoulder scream one thing. Enforcer. The cartel's pet killers, tasked with maintaining their brutal order. He raises his weapon, a thin line of blue energy tracing along the barrel. Come quietly, he says, his voice cold and flat. And maybe they'll show mercy. Mercy. The word sounds foreign, meaningless. But to fight now would be suicide. Instead, I hold up my hands, letting the distended claws retract with a nauseating series of pops. A display of submission. The enforcer steps closer, keeping his weapon trained on me. The cartel has an interest in you, he says. Don't make them regret it. And in that moment, I know. The freedom I'd clung to was a frayed illusion. The symbiont wasn't just changing my body, it was twisting my choices. Now, another cage loomed ahead. But this one might at least offer a chance to feed, to survive another day until I find a way to break the bond, or die trying. They didn't take me to a cell or some dingy interrogation room. Instead, they marched me to a spire that loomed over the rest of the Undercity. A bastion of ill-gotten power. The inside was a stark contrast to the grimy chaos outside. Polished floors, sleek metal walls, the tangy scent of ozone from omnipresent sun scrubbers. This was the heart of the cartel's operations, and a strange sense of foreboding settled over me. They led me through sterile corridors to a vast circular chamber. Enforcers lined the walls, their pulse rifles held ready, their stairs predatory. At the centre, on a raised dais, sat a figure cloaked in shadow. Leave us, the figure commanded. There was a sibilant hiss underlying his voice, a hint of something. Other. The enforcers hesitated, then bowed stiffly and filed out. As the doors sealed shut, a spotlight descended from the domed ceiling, casting the figure in stark relief. No man at all, but something else entirely. Scaly, iridescent skin gleamed in the artificial light. Huge, multifaceted eyes stared unblinkingly, and a fanged mouth twitched in what might have been a smile. Ah! Our... Guest! The creature hissed. He slid off his dais, his clawed feet making soft clicks on the polished floor. Come closer. I would get a better look at you. I took a wary step forward. The creature circled me a predator sizing up prey. Interesting, he finally murmured. So very interesting. The symbiont, it is not of my kind, but there is a kinship of sorts, a thirst. I sense it in you. He tilted his scaled head, the facets of his eyes swirling with unnerving colours. My name is Kylis. I command a small but influential portion of the cartel, concerned mostly with... Special acquisitions. And you, my friend, are quite the acquisition. Don't call me your friend, I snarled. His fanged mouth widened further. Ah, but we can be of great use to each other. The symbiont grants you power. I can help you channel it. Hone it into a tool. A weapon? He paused, then chuckled. A dry chitinous sound that made my skin crawl. Besides... What other choice do you have? The Enforcers will hunt you. The Undercity will consume you. My offer is... Salvation, of a sort. And... Your price? I asked. He spread his scaled hands. Obedience, loyalty, results. You eliminate my rivals, disrupt supply lines. The usual business of power. Something predatory crossed his multifaceted eyes. And from time to time, well, it gets hungry, yes? We all must indulge our appetites now and then. The implication was heavy and nauseating. This wasn't just a new cage. It was a whole damn zoo. He didn't want a weapon, he wanted a monster. Maybe it would be easier this way, 
let it take over, become the beast they wanted. At least then, I wouldn't have to live with the choices I made. But deep down, a stubborn shard of humanity remained. To give up completely was surrender worse than death. Kylis was right about one thing. I couldn't outrun this creature, or the cartel. My only chance was to walk a razor's edge, to play their game, to feed the monster, all while searching for a way to cut the leash that bound me to it. A bitter laugh forced its way out of my throat. Salvation and a full belly. What a generous patron you are. He inclined his scaled head. Generosity isn't part of my usual strategy. Think of this more as a mutually beneficial arrangement. And what if I refuse? What if I break out, vanish into the spindle again? He tilted his head, facets of his eyes swirling with an unsettling glow. Then, my friend, he said, you will find the Undercity far less forgiving, and my reach extends far beyond these walls. He paused, letting the threat sink in. However, loyalty has its rewards. Complete your tasks, bring forth results, and you'll find the hunger less of a burden. I swallowed the metallic taste of fear. You'll arm me, outfit me. If I was going to become his weapon, I'd need more than brute strength. Kylis's hand traced a slow circle in the air. Of course, your talents deserve refinement. We shall enhance you. His idea of enhancement was likely a far cry from my own. No matter, I needed the edge, the tools, if I had any hope of breaking free someday. Very well, I forced the words out. So, what's the first target? His mouth stretched into that disturbing grin. A rival gang lord, disrupting their supply shipments. A simple task to test your mettle. Consider it an audition. He clapped his scaled hands together, a sharp, percussive sound. The doors slid open and two enforcers stepped in. Kylis gave them a curt nod and turned towards me. They will take you to the armory. Prepare yourself. Success will pave the way to greater things. Failure. He shrugged. Well, the consequences of that are self-evident, I think. I followed the enforcers out, the creature within me whispering of power. The cartel armory wasn't the back alley workshop I was used to. This was a gleaming expanse, racks of pulse weapons, shelves stocked with grenades, gleaming combat suits that seemed spun from liquid starlight. It demonstrated the cartel's reach, their obscene wealth. And now, all this firepower was at my disposal. Outfit yourself, the lead enforcer grunted. Kylis expects results. They left me alone amidst the instruments of death. I moved down the rows, my augmented senses taking everything in. Standard issue mag pistols wouldn't do. I needed something heavier. My fingers moved across a control panel and a hidden compartment slid open, revealing a pulse shotgun, the same kind I'd seen the enforcers wield. Hefty, but it packed a punch. A combat suit hung nearby, not the bulky hard shell types, but sleek black, form-fitting. Symbiote weave. A voice purred from the shadows. I whirled, shotgun raised, to find a figure leaning against a rack of blades. He was lean, dressed in a simple black utilitarian garb, a half-mask obscuring his face. A cartel assassin, then. Easy there, friend, he chuckled, the sound low and devoid of warmth. Name's Tal. Kylis sent me. You're his new pet project, it seems. And you're my babysitter, I retorted, but kept the shotgun trained on him. Tal shrugged. More like... Advisor. Kylis wants you out there making a mess, but you're also... Raw. He circled me like a predator, his dark eyes calculating. So I'm to give you a few pointers. Ensure his investment doesn't go to waste. I hated it. The unspoken assessment in his words. But it was true. The symbiont gave me strength. Resilience but I lacked finesse. It was Tal's job to turn me into an efficient killing machine for their twisted purposes. We spent the next several hours in the firing range built within the armory. I learned the pulse shotgun's weight, its kickback, and how my augmented body handled the recoil. Tal, silent and observant, adjusted my posture, demonstrated quick reload drills that bordered on the impossible, 
drilled me until exhaustion made my limbs tremble. When it was finally over, as I leaned against the wall, gasping for breath, Tal tossed me a small vial. Restoration serum, he said curtly. Don't expect this every time. I downed the serum. Warmth flooded my veins, banishing the ache. Another advantage, another chain. By the time night fell, I was armed, outfitted, and painfully aware that my transformation had only begun. Tal led me out of the armory and through a maze of corridors towards the surface access point. The target is a warehouse district controlled by the Razorbacks, he explained. Simple in and out. Destroy their munitions cache. Make it a spectacle. And afterwards, I asked, my voice taut. Tal smiled, the flash of white teeth stark against his black mask. Afterwards, you feed. We emerged into the endless drizzle of Neo Terra's night. Tal pointed me towards a transport carrier, a hulking beast of rusted metal and exposed wiring. Razorback territory is three sectors over. Kylis will monitor your progress, Tal said, his voice a thread barely heard over the carrier's whine. Remember, strength is nothing without control. Use it efficiently, and tonight can be the start of something grand. His words held a veiled promise, an unspoken path for a creature like me within the cartel's ranks. Perhaps this was what Kylis had meant by greater things. A position, influence, a chance to slake the hunger without being a mindless beast. It was strangely alluring, this notion of taming the monster and using it to climb, a twisted form of ambition in this wretched world. I settled into the pilot seat, interfacing with the clunky controls with surprising ease. It fed me navigational data, the icons of Razorback patrols glowing ominously on a heads-up display. The carrier lurched into motion, skimming above the endless sprawl of the Undercity. Alone in the cramped cockpit, I flexed my hands, feeling the claws twitch beneath the skin. I was no longer fully human. This relentless transformation was changing me, warping me into something that thrived on violence. Yet, amidst the surge of bestial power, a desperate question lingered. How much of my humanity could I retain? The warehouse district was a festering scar on the cityscape, a maze of dilapidated factories and rusted shipping containers. Razorback gangers patrolled in ragged packs, their crudely augmented bodies glistening under the rain-slicked lights. My fingers squeezed the controls, sending the carrier hurtling downwards. It crashed through a decaying rooftop, sending shards of ferrocrete flying. Alarms screamed, and spotlights swiveled to focus on the wreckage. I burst from the carrier, the pulse shotgun booming in my hands. Mag blasts tore through the air, the first wave of gangers reduced to bloody mist. I was a relentless storm carving a path through the terrified ranks of the Razorbacks. Pain was a distant throb. I smashed through walls, barreled through corridors, the munitions cache highlighted on my display amidst the chaos. Tal's lessons resonated in my mind, not brute force alone, but calculated brutality. I aimed for limbs, joints, maximizing casualties and spreading terror. The gangers scattered, their panicked screams blending with the staccato thunder of my weapon. I reached the cache, a fortified vault of rusting metal. A single pulse blast shattered the door open. Within lay crates stacked high with explosives and unmarked canisters glowing with a toxic green hue. The Razorback's arsenal. I triggered the detonator. The explosion ripped through the warehouse, a blinding flash, a shockwave that sent me hurtling back. Rubble rained down around me, fires blazed, fueled by the volatile chemicals. Nearby, amongst the wreckage, the twitching bodies of the few surviving Razorbacks moaned in agony. Tal's words came back to me. Afterwards, you feed. The thought brought not revulsion, but a sense of weary resignation. This was the contract I'd made, the beast unleashed, the debt to be paid. I moved through the ruins like a spectre. The symbiont's enhanced senses painted a picture of agony, screams of the dying, the sickly sweet tang of burnt flesh, the ragged gasps of those struggling for a final breath. I didn't hesitate. 
My hesitation, the ghost of my humanity had died a little more tonight. The first kill was a mercy. A twisted skull, eyes wide with terror, pleading beneath a shattered piece of ferrocrete. A quick blast from the pulse shotgun ended it. Then came the others, their shattered bodies too broken for quick deaths. The symbiont hummed low and insistent, guiding my movements, directing me to the warmest bodies, the freshest blood. The act itself was strangely mundane, devoid of the revulsion I had expected. I crouched, claws tearing through charred flesh, and then I fed. The taste was metallic, polluted. I was no longer a scavenger, but something far more primal. When it was over, I slumped against a half-melted support beam. The symbiont seemed sated, but I knew the hunger would return. Always it would return. Through the haze, a new sensation surfaced. A strange satisfaction laced with a growing unease. The mission was complete, the Razorbacks broken. A part of me, a darker part I barely recognized, reveled in the efficiency, the brutality. That same part also whispered of escalation, greater acts of destruction, a rise through the cartel's blood-soaked ranks. Tal emerged from the smoke-wreathed shadows, clapping slowly. Well done. Impulsive, yes, but... He trailed off, his eyes glinting behind the mask. There's a raw potential there. Kylis will be pleased. He surveyed the carnage. Now let's get you out of here. The enforcers will be swarming soon. Kylis wants to keep your existence discreet. For now. Tal led me to a hidden exit, a crumbling maintenance tunnel that snaked its way back towards the cartel territory. We moved in silence, the rhythmic drip of water the only sound in the oppressive darkness. You'll have quarters in the tower, he said, breaking the silence. And further training, of course. Kylis is not one to waste. He paused, searching for the right word. An asset. I flexed my claws, the light glinting dully off their razor edges. Asset. It hardly mattered anymore. And how long until the next assignment? I asked, the question heavy and cold in the tunnel's stagnant air. Tal didn't answer directly. The hunger never truly goes away, boy. His voice was low, a hint of something like pity in it. But with each success, with each meal, it becomes easier to bear, and you will find a purpose in service to Kylis. Purpose always helps to tame the beast. We emerged into the corridors of the cartel's domain. I walked alongside him, a predator on a chain. My quarters turned out to be a cramped cell, upgraded. While cleaner and better appointed than the spindle hovels I was used to, it was still a gilded cage. A slim, reinforced window overlooked the neon-streaked cityscape, reminding me of the vastness of Neo-Terra and the tiny sliver of it I now occupied. A knock interrupted my brooding. Tal entered, followed by two enforcers carrying a bulky crate. Orders from Kylis, Tal said, nodding to the enforcers. They deposited the crate and retreated quickly, keeping wary eyes on me the entire time. Tal gestured to the unopened container. Upgrades. Consider them a reward for your enthusiastic debut. I moved closer, suspicion warring with curiosity. Had Kylis been observing the warehouse? If so, he had witnessed not just success, but the raw, unrestrained brutality. A pleased hiss escaped him when I pried open the crate. Inside lay a suit of armor, not the bulky exosuits, but something sleeker, segmented, each plate a shimmering, obsidian black. Tal whistled as I lifted a segmented gauntlet, flexing my clawed fingers within. Kylis spares no expense he murmured. That weave is top tier. It'll mold to your form, harden on impact, channel the symbiote's energies. He trailed off, his voice laced with envy he couldn't fully conceal. I slipped the armor on. It flowed over my skin, binding tight, the plates interlocking seamlessly. My reflection in the darkened window transformed. Where once stood a ragged street scavenger, now a shadowy predator stared back. More lessons tomorrow, Tal said, his voice slightly strained. Control. Refinement. Tonight, though. Tonight you rest, 
or do whatever it is you creatures do. He left, but his words lingered in the air. Creature. Perhaps that's all I was to them now, but even as I stripped off the armor, a sliver of perverse pride prickled under my skin. Kylis's upgrades, Tal's envy. It hinted at the path ahead. A path where I might not be fully human or fully controlled, but undeniably powerful. Was this the purpose Tal had spoken of? A blood-stained ascent through the ranks. Exhaustion pulled me towards the sleep pallet, but sleep was elusive. In the encroaching darkness, I stared at the relentless city lights beyond the window and the reflection of the monster within. Tomorrow, the lessons would continue. Tomorrow, I would be honed into an even deadlier weapon. And with each lesson, with each bloody task, my humanity would further erode. Days bled into a grueling cycle of training and missions. In dingy firing ranges and sterile simulation chambers, Tal drilled me relentlessly. He taught me not just to unleash the power, but to harness it, to channel it with precision. My senses, already enhanced, were honed further. I learned to track targets through the teeming undercity like prey, anticipate attacks with uncanny accuracy. Kylis's missions grew bolder. Rival supply convoys ambushed, their shipments of black market tech and illicit substances diverted into cartel hands. Strongholds raided with surgical strikes, leaving behind a trail of mangled bodies and shattered fortifications. My name, whispered in fear, began to creep through the shadows. The cartel territories were a war zone fought in grimy alleys and rain-spattered rooftops. Enforcer squads, rival gangs, they all became obstacles, targets. With each victory, the symbiont's hunger intensified, demanding a bloodier toll in return for the power it granted. The armor, now permanently grafted to my skin like a second self, amplified my strength, hardened my strikes. It also seemed to dull whatever qualms my human side still harbored. Yet Kylis was a master manipulator. The brutality was interspersed with flashes of indulgence. After each successful operation, there were rewards. Access to ration-grade food, stimulants that pushed my body beyond its limits, brief respites in chambers filled with filtered air and artificial warmth, a cruel illusion of luxury in the squalor of neo-terror, Tal, too, changed with time. The envy faded, replaced by a wary respect, a grudging acknowledgement of my place in the cartel's hierarchy. He began confiding in me, snippets of knowledge about the internal power struggles, the alliances as fragile as smoke rings. It was his way, I realized, of weaving me further into his poisonous world. One rain-soaked night as I stood atop the cartel tower, watching the endless cityscape throb beneath me. Kylis himself slithered into the observation chamber. His scaled, iridescent skin gleamed under the diffused lighting. His multifaceted eyes fixed on me like a hunter appraising prized game. You are progressing well. The sibilant hiss of his voice snaked through the room. Your efficiency. It pleases me. I knew better than to voice the questions eating at me. How long would this path of carnage continue? Was there even a final goal, or was the climb itself the only purpose I was meant to serve? Loyalty is valued, Kylis continued, his fingers tapping against the reinforced glass. And of course, so is ambition. We have plans for one such as yourself. He turned those disconcerting eyes upon me fully. You've shown potential a willingness to shed weakness. But there are more tests to come, more difficult choices. Are you ready to discard the last remnants of your humanity? My claws scraped against the glass, leaving faint scratches in its surface. Was I willing to completely surrender to the monster he was so carefully crafting? Show me the next task, I said, pushing the words out, my voice low and devoid of emotion. Show me the price to pay, the power to be gained. Kylis's fanged smile was cold and wide. Excellent, he hissed in satisfaction. Excellent indeed. The die was cast. In the grim dark depths of Neo-Terra, there were always battles to be fought, 
always blood to spill, and I, once a scavenger with faint remnants of a conscience, was poised to become something far more dangerous, a honed weapon in the cartel's arsenal. Kylis had a new target for me. Not a rival gang, not a supply convoy, but an enforcer captain. Corrupt beyond even the usual standards, a sadist whose brutality outstripped the need for control. Apparently, he'd become a liability, even to the cartel's twisted morals. A test, then. Elimination of one their own was the ultimate proof of loyalty, and a ruthless pragmatism that he clearly prized. Tal, as usual, delivered the details. His name is Verek, he spat, his once masked face now openly distrustful. He runs the enforcers in Sector 5, a real piece of work even for them. Make it messy. An example. The mission burned within me, a strange mix of revulsion and grim determination. Killing enforcers, the very embodiment of the power to which I now aspired. There was a twisted logic to it, a sign of my rapid ascent. I was no longer just a tool, I was becoming a threat, one that Kylis was keen to keep firmly under his control. Sector 5 was a choked labyrinth of rusted pipes and decaying industrial buildings. Verex headquarters was a converted refinery, fortified and bristling with weaponry. My senses picked out patrols, rooftop snipers, the thrum of barely contained violence that clung to the place. The symbiont was eager for the chaos, relishing the coming carnage, but a coldly rational part of me, the stubborn remnant of who I used to be, analyzed the defenses. Brute force alone would be suicide. I needed something more. I spent the next few days haunting the shadows, weaving through the underbelly of the sector. Verek's cruelty had earned him enemies. I found them in the spindle dwellers, the ragged remnants of gangs he had crushed, their whispers filled with simmering hatred. They were pawns, easily manipulated. It sat heavy in my gut, the realization of how far I'd sunk. Even now I preyed on the weak. Yet they were the only chance I had. The plan formed with brutal clarity. An uprising, a calculated distraction to draw Verex forces into the open. I would be the spear point, the unstoppable force unleashed amidst the chaos, my mission veiled within the greater bloodshed. The night I chose was sodden with rain, the grime-streaked light of distant firefights painting the sky an imitation of dawn. I triggered the uprising, a series of precisely planted explosives, a few well-placed rumors to further fuel their hatred. Sector 5 exploded in a wave of rage and desperation. I struck as the refinery buzzed with furious activity. The armor absorbed gunfire. Claws tore through flesh and ferrocrete with equal ease. It was a bloodbath, the symbiont screaming in dark delight as I carved my path towards Verex's sanctum. Enforcers fell, disciplined at first, then collapsing into panic as they faced a foe even their viciousness couldn't match. Verek waited for me, bolstered by a cadre of his most loyal goons, a look of ugly surprise on his scarred face. He expected a beast, unthinking, and for a blissful moment, I was. But the lessons lingered. I fainted, drew attacks away from the killing strike, let his underlings pay for his arrogance in blood. It ended with a broken neck and the crunch of his spine as I cast him aside like a discarded doll. The uprising choked and died in the rain, its purpose served. Below the sector burned, a pyre for my own ruthless ambition. Back in the tower, Kylis awaited. He said nothing as I stripped off the blood-soaked armor. Effective, he finally said, his hand tracing an idle pattern on his throne. Brutal, yet controlled. You passed my test. He rose, a sinuous motion that belied his bulk, and his multifaceted eyes settled on me. I have plans for you, he purred. Great plans. I swallowed the bitter taste in my mouth. My future was clear. More blood, more power, a relentless climb fueled by the creature inside and my own growing hunger for something more. Perhaps I was a monster now, but Kylis, the cartel, they too were monsters. And every monster, no matter how powerful, had a weakness. Finding it, that would be my next 
and perhaps final test. The ascent was heady. I was Kylas's blade now, his shadow. Rivals vanished at my passing, their territories absorbed into his ever-expanding domain. My missions became less about violence, more about cold calculation. I learned to speak the cartel's language, threats veiled in honeyed words, deals brokered with blood and whispered promises. The creature within me thrummed in satisfaction. It grew ever stronger, reshaping my body. The claws lengthened, the armoured carapace thickened, and I moved with a speed and precision that defied even the enhanced limits of human form. I had power, purpose. I played my part, but I observed, listened, gathered knowledge of Kylas's weaknesses like a miser hoards his ill-gotten wealth. I discovered his paranoia, the rival factions he secretly feared, the tenuous threads upon which his dominion hung. And within this landscape of ambition and brutality, I began to weave my own pattern. Tal was the first thread. His loyalty, once given to the cartel, wavered. We circled each other, the predator and the prey, bound by a shared understanding. I became his shield against the rising tide of my own power, and he, the whisper in the shadows, feeding my knowledge of the cartel's shifting alliances, its hidden fault lines. Then came the others, disillusioned enforcers, warlords from shattered gangs, scavengers with ambition burning. My reputation, the very thing Kylis had cultivated, became my greatest asset. They saw in me not just a weapon, but potential, power unhinged from his serpentine clutches. The day I finally moved was like any other. A mission, a deal to be brokered amidst ferrocrete ruins. Only this time, my mark was not some hapless rival, but an inner circle lieutenant, one of Kylas's tendrils of control. My ambush was swift, honed by countless bloody assignments, but not without cost. I was wounded, the symbiote writhing within, demanding I consume, regenerate, survive. I sought refuge in the spindle, in the very depths from which I had ascended. My followers, a strange word for the desperate and vengeful, found me there. They patched my wounds, their eyes gleaming with a fervor I mirrored, and I knew the moment was ripe. The war for the Undercity was unlike anything I had ever experienced. It wasn't a clean sweep, territory marked out like a game board. It was a wildfire, a chaotic tide of alliances and betrayals shifting with speed. We struck from the shadows, vanished into the labyrinth. I became the boogeyman, whispered of in fear in the heart of Killis's own fortress. The symbiote was both blessing and curse. It granted me resilience, the ability to fight beyond mortal limits. But I felt it slipping from Kylas's subtle control, twisting in response to my will, becoming ever more a part of me. The final confrontation took place not in some fortified tower, but in the rain-drenched depths where the arteries of Neoterra flowed with filth and machine waste. Kylas stood before me, the iridescent shimmer of his scales muted by the rancid, dripping darkness. You were my greatest creation, he said. And you my greatest mistake, I retorted. The battle was raw, brutal, no trace of the calculated strikes Tal had taught me. It was tooth and claw, symbiote augmentations pushing our bodies to grotesque extremes. Kylis wielded his own power, a ripple flowing from him, corrupting the very air. But I was built for this war, born in it, and the creature within was no longer solely his to command. In the end, it was I who stood over his broken form, claws dripping with his blood. His multifaceted eyes, once filled with intelligence, fluttered dimly, reflecting only the wavering glow of the disposal furnace nearby. The hunger. He choked out a pathetic gurgle. It always wins. The words were a chilling epitaph. The monster had won. I had won. Yet looking at my reflection in the oily runoff, a face split by a feral grin, blades for fingers, I knew there was no escape. The hunger was now part of me, and all the power in the grim, dark, twisted world of Neo Terra would never truly fill it. There could be no noble ending to a tale like mine. 